Well, let me show you one of my favorite pieces of chemical magic. Watch this. Two colorless liquids get mixed together, and now the object is just to stare at the liquid, stare at it. In fact, uh, it almost looks like it's a little bit different right now. It doesn't look as clear as it once was. If you look very carefully, it looks just like ink, doesn't it? And this is called Think Ink. Now, it's a piece of chemical mag magic. It was a, a very, very cool chemical reaction that took place inside. It was actually popularized by a magician back in the 1930s by the name of Orville Meyer, who had the original Think Ink. The formulation that they used used some fairly toxic chemicals, uh, sulfuric acid and some things that today, in today's classroom, we wouldn't want to use. This is a brand new uh, formulation that's never been released, and so we're very happy to be able to reintroduce Think Ink. Let me show you what you're going to get in the kit. Uh, here are all of the, the things that you're going to have. First of all, most importantly, you have a pair of safety glasses. So it actually comes in the kit. So we want you to make sure those safety glasses are on. This formulation uses uh, fairly non-toxic chemicals. And when I say that, I mean uh, many of these are household-like chemicals. Uh, you'll see there are three jars sitting in front of you. There's a timing uh, powder, there's a trigger powder, and then there's a recycling powder I'll tell you about in a second. And we're actually going to do the reaction in these large test tubes. And so you can see that you have the test tube rack as well. Here's the first First step, what you need to do is just going to use regular tap water. And we're doing it in front of this screen just so that you can kind of see the liquids inside. My recommendation is in these uh, clean uh, test tubes is to fill one up almost full and then just divide it in half uh, so that you know that you're going to have the right amount of water. All right, so half and half. We're going to consider this one A and we're going to consider this one B. If you need to take a piece of masking tape and put A on one side or B on this side or maybe down here on the rack, that would be fine. But for our purposes, this will be A and this will be B. Uh, this is a classic uh, starch iodine reaction, and so in order to use the starch, instead of giving you some starch, we're actually going to give you these packing peanuts. So these are these starch peanuts. So this peanut here actually goes into the test tube, and uh, we're going to put the lid on, and now the, the object here is to get it to dissolve as much as possible. So a little shake up is fine and a swirl around and that starch will start to dissolve. It's not gonna dissolve completely. There'll be just a little bit left over, but uh, it's not gonna be enough to, to uh, hinder the reaction at all, all right? So this is the starch that goes in here, and again, that's test tube A. To test tube A, we're gonna put in timing powder. The timing powder, make sure that you mix up the powder before you start. You're gonna need two scoops of the timing powder, so you can kinda see the powder here. We're gonna use two scoops in this formulation of our timing powder, and there's the second scoop. All right, feel like I'm on a cooking show. And now we're not going to put the cap back on again because if you look closely at this, can you see the, the bubbling that's going on here? That bubbling is actually producing carbon dioxide gas, and we want to make sure that, uh, that we don't build up any pressure and, and, uh, and throw liquid out of, the, uh, out of the test tube. So do not put the cap back on again, just a gentle stirring, or there are some stirring sticks that are in the kit as well, and you can simply do that. That's all you have to do for test tube A. Test tube B now gets a powder called trigger powder. Again, nice little mix up here one uh, scoop of the trigger powder and that is going to go over here. So we have timing in one, we have trigger in the other one, and again, we're going to stir that around and kind of let that dissolve. You might be able to see the powder at the bottom. Take a look at this. As I spin this around like this, if you look very closely, you can see the powder that's still on the bottom. This is the undissolved powder. I really would like to have this completely dissolved. If you wanted to do the reaction right now, you could, but my recommendation is to let this sit for 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, and in fact, uh, you can actually decant some of this off so that they all are what they look like colorless liquids. So take a look at this. You can see just a small amount of the foam that's right there. If you had to, you can just uh, take some of that out if you want to transfer it to a new cup. But I think we can do the reaction just like this. So here, watch what happens. We'll pour it in. Three, two, one, it goes in like this. Now we've got that reaction or that uh, competition that's going inside. We're actually taking iodine from the reduced state to the oxidized state and you can see the reaction taking place. This is a nice slow reaction right here until finally, bam, the whole thing changes and we've got our, our starch iodine reaction. The warmer the water, the faster it will go. And so you can see it, it turns black. At this particular point, you've created now iodine. And so we could dump that, but I'd prefer that you don't. So that's why you have some of the recycling powder. So our recycling powder is over here and it's only gonna take about a half a scoop 
of our little recycling powder and that's going to go into the empty test tube. And now take a look at what happens when we mix the two together. Watch this. We go back to our colorless state and your science magic is done. I think it's a beautiful reaction, a beautiful example of a clock reaction and a very, very easy way for you to be introduced to some very complex chemistry using redox or reduction oxidation and a starch iodine reaction. Have fun doing Think Inc. I guarantee to fool your friends.